Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hi, I'm A.J. Hogue, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. I teach independent, intelligent, motivated learners like you to speak English powerfully. Go to EffortlessEnglish.com, EffortlessEnglish.com, enter your email for my free audiobook. I will give you my audiobook free. Enter your email at EffortlessEnglish.com. All right. Time for our first Effortless English show of 2018. I am talking to you from Indiana in the United States. Pronunciation. Let's talk about pronunciation. Talk some more about pronunciation. Now, we all agree pronunciation is important. Why? Why is pronunciation important? Well, for the simple reason that we need to be understood. No understanding. No communication, right? You can know a lot of grammar. You can know a lot of vocabulary. But if your pronunciation is terrible, people will not understand you. Therefore, your grammar becomes useless. Your vocabulary becomes useless. So we absolutely need good pronunciation. Not necessarily perfect pronunciation, but good, right? Clear. Clear pronunciation. And that's why you want to speak English with a standard clear accent. Why? So, for example, a standard clear North American accent. Why is that important? Well, because these standard accents, these, the standard pronunciation, is the most understood everywhere in the world. The most easily understood because it's the most common. So, if you're living in England, you want to speak with a clear North American accent or a clear standard British accent. Because both of those accents are very easy for most English speakers to understand and certainly very, very easy for most native speakers to understand. And those are really the two most common. Yes, Australia has a standard accent, of course, and other places that speak English, but in the internet and in media, mostly what we see are either the North American accent, the standard North American accent, or the standard British accent. North American accent is probably the most common, simply because the United States is much bigger and has a much larger economy, more media, etc. The British accent would be second. So, if you can speak with one of those accents clearly, then everybody will understand you. That's why it's important. Well, the next thing is, um, you know, what's the problem? Why do people have trouble with pronunciation? I mean, that's a good question, right? I mean, we should think about the problem first. Think like a, like a doctor. First, we have to diagnose, right? We have to uh, decide what the illness is. What is the disease? We know the disease is bad pronunciation. Well, what causes that disease, right? I mean, think about it. Why? Why? Why do so many English learners around the world have terrible pronunciation? Maybe you have terrible pronunciation. So why is that? Well, I think the number one reason is that most students learn English in school, and we have to be honest, most English teachers in schools have bad pronunciation. I'm talking about not in the United States, not in not in Britain, but in other countries where English is not the main spoken language, most English teachers have really bad pronunciation. I have seen this myself. I've seen it in Thailand. I've seen it in Japan. I've seen it in Korea. And I've heard from my students in many, 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 many other countries who say the exact same thing. For example, students in Vietnam who complain that their English teachers in their schools have terrible, terrible pronunciation. 
So it makes sense. The students are hearing terrible pronunciation as they learn the beginning of the language. They're hearing their Japanese English teachers or Chinese English teachers or whatever. It's, it's every country in the world, really. They're hearing their teachers speak very, very badly. And then they hear this pronunciation and that's what they learn. They learn that same terrible pronunciation. They just don't hear the standard accents enough as they learn. So this is the main problem. Now, I'm not attacking those, those teachers. Some of those teachers really uh, want to help. But uh, really, those teachers should work on their pronunciation. And this is one reason that uh, having native speakers as teachers or as coaches, even just online like me, is so important because it gives you that clear pronunciation. You get to hear how to pronounce things correctly and clearly so that people will understand you when you speak English. Very important. And it's the same, by the way, if I'm learning Spanish, well, I want to hear native Spanish speakers, right? Because when I learned uh, the beginnings of Spanish in high school, for example, um, in high school, my Spanish teacher had a terrible accent. She had a Southern United States accent. So she spoke Spanish with a weird gringo southern accent. So I, I heard all kinds of terrible Spanish pronunciation. And only later did I improve my pronunciation somewhat by listening to native speakers, mostly from Spain. All right, let's go. Let's go forward. One more point about the problem. A second problem in schools and English classes around the world is that in many, 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 many classes, probably most, they don't teach pronunciation at all. So number one, you have teachers that are speaking badly. But also, even with native speakers sometimes, for example, in conversation schools, in different countries. You might have someone from the United States teaching, or Canada, or wherever. But often, I'd say usually, even the native speakers don't specifically teach you pronunciation. In most schools, in most classes, you don't study pronunciation. You don't practice it in a disciplined way, in an organized way, right? Mostly they're teaching grammar and somewhat vocabulary. But that's it. So this is the, another problem because the truth is pronunciation needs training. You can improve your pronunciation through simply listening, kind of in an indirect way. But to really have good, clear pronunciation, you actually need to have some focused, organized pronunciation training. And again, most schools simply don't do that. So, there's our problem. Okay, we see the clear problem, so what's the solution, right? Well, how do you do it? How do you teach yourself, train yourself, because you're an independent learner now, so you don't need to worry about the schools, you don't need to constantly think about all the problems with the schools, you are the boss now. You're the boss of your own learning. And that's good news. And even better news, you can train yourself to be understood every time you speak English, to have great, clear pronunciation. And that gives you a lot of confidence when you speak, when your pronunciation is very clear. And other people, they, they just, they will look at you differently. When you have good, clear pronunciation, people think that you're advanced. Even if your vocabulary and grammar is not so advanced, you still feel more advanced to them. So it's good. Okay, the question then, how do we do it? How do we do it? So we have to think about this. Pronunciation is a little different than vocabulary and grammar, and even just fluency. Because pronunciation is very much a physical skill. It's a physical skill, meaning good pronunciation depends on using the muscles in your mouth, your face, your throat, 
correctly, in the right way. And these are small little muscles, and you have to, they're very tiny little movements to create the different sounds of speech. And so when you're trying to, to pronounce things differently in English, in a different language, you've got to train those muscles in your face and throat and mouth and your tongue, all of that. You've got to train those muscles. It's, it's kind of like learning to play the piano or, or, or the guitar. You know, part of learning the guitar is you have to train your fingers to move, to make the correct notes. And you've got to train them to do it faster and faster and faster until eventually you can, you can move those fingers, both hands, <laughs> very quickly and effortlessly, automatically. Then you become a good guitar player, or you can play a song very well, but it takes a lot of training, and a lot of it is just training the muscles. And of course, part of training the muscles, you're also training your brain at the same time, right? Because it's your brain that controls the muscles. So, this is cool though, because what we can do is we can learn to improve our pronunciation by looking at other physical skills, like playing a musical instrument, such as the guitar or the piano, or even something like martial arts, like I'm doing jiu-jitsu now, I keep talking about jiu-jitsu because I'm excited about it. But it's the same thing, jiu-jitsu, um, when we're fighting, wrestling and jiu-jitsu, there are certain techniques, and they have several different parts. And I, and I have to, first I have to just learn how to do it. I have to learn it slowly so I can see each part. First grab here, then do this, then do this, you know, move. All these new ways to move my body. And there's a step-by-step -step process. But that's not enough because just knowing it's not enough because in jiu-jitsu, the fighting is very fast. So there's no time to slowly think about every step. So the next thing I have to practice those techniques, each step, again and again and again. And I have to make sure each time I practice, I do it perfectly, do it correctly. And I have to do it in the correct order. And at first, in the beginning, that practice is very slow. So I can focus on doing it correctly. So I'll do this, do this, do this, do this, do this you know. Again and again, I just repeat it again, repeat it again. I also watch videos of like really good jujitsu fighters. I watch and see how they do it. That's another part of learning. Watch how they do it and then copy them. And then one step by step by step, first slowly. And then of course, what do I need to do? I have to get speed, right? In a real fight, it's very fast. So I need, I need to do it correctly. That's part one, but I also need to do it very, very quickly. So gradually, I try to practice those techniques and go faster, and go a little faster, and go a little faster. And sometimes I'll go really fast, but then I'll make mistakes, right? If I go too fast, it's too fast for me, and so I'll forget something, or I'll do something incorrectly. And then I have to back up and do some more slow practice. And so it's constantly pushing myself to go a little faster, dropping back to go slowly, do it correctly, go forward again, watch some videos so I can you know, remember all the steps and how to do it really well. And this is the process. And then little by little by little, I'll get the technique until it becomes automatic. And it can take quite a long time. It's the same with learning a, a song on the guitar, right? First, you, you're gonna, uh, there's a great medical Suzuki method. And what they do is they break the song into little pieces and you practice uh, little small pieces slowly at first. You do like a little piece in the middle, a little piece at the end, the beginning. You just mix them all up. You practice all these little pieces of the song. First slowly, then gradually faster, faster, faster. Tiny little pieces. Then you put these small pieces together and make slightly longer ones. And then slightly bigger ones until you can do the whole song. Slowly at first and then gradually pushing yourself to go faster, faster, faster. You might also listen to this recording of the song so you can kind of understand the feeling and the timing of the song. And this is the same kind of process. You see where I'm going with this, right? Same thing for pronunciation. You need deliberate, focused, organized training for pronunciation. To train those muscles to work in the correct way, it's the same thing. Pronunciation, you don't, you can do video. Like in my pronunciation course, there's always a video at the beginning because I show you, you can see how I am moving my mouth. 
That's important. So you, you do that. And then you also, of course, listen. So that's the first part of learning the technique. I explain what to do with your mouth and tongue and muscles, all of that. I also give you some things to think about because sometimes it helps if you have like a, like a little coaching thing to think about to help you do the correct things with your muscles. Then what's the next step with pronunciation training? Well, of course, the next step is then to do it slowly. Break it into smaller pieces that are easy to practice. So maybe in the beginning, that's just one sound. It's difficult, like ah, or i, or the r sound, or the l sound, and then you'll do a little bit bigger piece, so syllables or short words, put, hit, run, laugh, whatever, right, and you'll practice those, and, and you'll practice them slowly at first, doing them exactly right. And then what do you need to do next? Of course, then you gotta get more speed, more speed for, with those small pieces. So you'll practice them faster. Sometimes when you go fast, you'll make mistakes. So then you have to slow down again. And you keep pushing yourself back and forth, back and forth until you can do these small pieces, words or short phrases, quickly and naturally at normal speed. Then what's next? Well, just like a song, you gotta then put it together for something very long. So full sentences full paragraphs, even a full page of English, and do that first slowly, training yourself to do, pronounce correctly everything, and then faster, a little faster, 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 fast, then drop down to slow again, fast to push yourself, slow to do everything carefully, fast to push yourself, slow to do everything carefully, back and forth, back and forth, until finally it becomes automatic and normal conversational speed. That's how you train yourself to have great English pronunciation. That's how you do it. See, it's a very disciplined method. It's, it's, it, it's, it's like music or even like learning a sports skill. So you need this for pronunciation. Okay, now it needs to be organized. It needs to be disciplined and you need to do it each and every day. You know, 15 minutes a day is enough in, for a while. Just that. 15, 20 minutes a day. When you're more advanced, maybe you can do longer. But in the, you know, while you're an intermediate level, I think 15, 20 minutes a day of pronunciation is fine. It's enough. All right, so that's what I want you to do. I just gave you this, this, you know, this outline of how to do something. You can do this at home yourself. You can just find any audio. You can use this show. You can use any of my other podcasts. And you can follow basically what I just said, that same basic approach. Now, in other videos, I've, I have taught you other methods of training that I use in my pronunciation course. But this gives you just the very, very basic way to improve your pronunciation. You can do it independently at home or get my pronunciation course. And a quick note about that. I am giving a discount code, a special discount, on my pronunciation course only to my VIP members, only to VIP members. I will send that in the, in the next couple weeks. So in the next couple of weeks, next few weeks, I'm going to give all my VIP members a discount on my pronunciation course. Because I believe that VIP and the pronunciation course are really a good package, a good combination. Because VIP teaches more advanced fluency, more advanced vocabulary. While the pronunciation course helps you to be understood and to speak very clearly. So that's what you need. You need both to be advanced, to be very good. You need to speak quickly and automatically and also clearly in a way that is understood all the time. So that's why I'm doing this together. So VIP members only. So join my VIP program. You can try it for $1. Join my VIP program. And then I will send you an email as a VIP member with a code, give you a special discount on my pronunciation course. And you can join my VIP program now at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go to the bottom, you'll see the menu. The menu says VIP, click that. 
So EffortlessEnglishClub.com is my courses site. That's where I have all my courses available. All right, look, I hope you have a good year this year. Let's have a good year with English. Pronunciation is important, and so is fluency. You need both of them. All right, train yourself and enjoy it. This should be a fun process, right? Don't make yourself stressed about this. Make it fun. All right, I will see you on Twitter. I will see you in the next show. Again, go to EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Join my VIP program, and I'll see you next time.